Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm going to teach you about primary text frames and how they can significantly increase your workflow and productivity. So to get started, let's open up a new InDesign document. I'm going to go to File, New Document. And here is where we are going to get our first opportunity to add a primary text frame. Primary text frame option can be found right here, this little checkbox. But not to worry, if you don't click it at the beginning here, we can fix it later on. So just for the sake of example, we are not going to check that box right now, and we will add primary text frames later on. So let's give this a name. Let's do, sure, eight and a half by 11 is fine. We do want facing pages. Let's do that for our margins, that for our bleeds. All right, now that we have everything set up here, I'm gonna create the document. Got the wrong orientation document set up. Switch that. Okay. Now we are here. So a recent project that we had was an index. We had an index um, with a lot of content in it. And we had to format this index. And partway through the project, we decided to switch from a single column to a two column layout. And this would have been a lot of work if I had not used my primary text frames. So to get some content in here, let's go ahead and import in that same exact index. All right, we're gonna place this index in here. I'm gonna load it onto my cursor. And I'm just gonna draw a text box for this to live in. Excellent. All right, so right now we have the single text box. It's just a regular text box. There is currently overset text as indicated by this little red cross square. And I need to add more pages for my content to go on. So. By default, if I'm just using these regular text boxes, what do I have to do? I have to add more pages, go up here, click my overset text box, draw a new text box, or if you are feeling fancy, you can click in this overset text and then shift click to place text boxes to the extensions of the margins until it runs out of content. It'll keep generating new pages. However, this can be problematic if we need to create a two column layout. So if I was going to manually do this, I would have to click these boxes at the bottom, this little one here. I would have to click it create a new thread for this, draw the secondary box, open it up, there we go. And now I have two columns and they're not the same size. Now I'm gonna have to do this for every single page manually, but let's speed this process up. So first things first, we need to add what is called a primary text frame. We do this in our parent pages on the side. I'm going to navigate to my A parent. First, I'm going to set the proper margins that I want to have. So I'm going to make sure both of these pages are selected and I'm going to edit my margin and column settings. So I'm going to really increase these margins, make them more like this. And I'm going to give more of a gutter on the inside. Now I'm going to increase this to a two column layout and also increase that gutter. 
Now I have an easy template to follow when I go to place my text boxes. All I'm going to do is go to my type tool, select it, and now I'm going to draw, just like normal, a text box on this parent page. Now what makes a text box different when it becomes a parent frame, a primary text frame, all you gotta do is click this icon. When it takes on this appearance, it is now a primary text frame. And what that means is it is going to appear on every instance of this A parent page. If I want to extend this primary frame into both columns, I'm going to click this square at the bottom, draw it out over here, and now if you'll notice, if I turn my text threads on, let's show text threads. Now we can see that the thread goes from here to this text frame and they're both primary text frames because they have this icon. Now, I want my text frame to continue. I want to make another one that goes over here. So I'm using Alt and clicking and dragging to make this one. Note, this is now a regular text frame. I'm going to connect it to these ones by clicking this square at the bottom and then linking it in. Now it is also a parent. Same thing again, I'm gonna Alt, click and drag. I'm going to click and link this one in. Now we have a complete thread that goes across both uh, pages of this spread and in four columns total. So now when we go back to our regular pages, you can't see the primary text frame. It does exist on these pages, but you can't see it. Okay, so now that I have this content in this box, what I'm going to do is to basically place the overset text into the primary text frame. To, the, to do this, I'm going to click the Overset Text button. And now, notice, because there's a primary text frame invisibly floating in this area, InDesign is showing me that I can now link this text thread into the primary text frame, and I'm going to do that simply by clicking in here. Now InDesign is automatically flowing everything through this whole document into the primary text frames. I can simply delete this one now and everything will flow into these primaries. Our old text boxes are now gone and everything is going as it should be. As we can see here on these pages, um, there are still the old text frames. I don't need these pages anymore, um, so I'm just going to delete those. But if you'll notice, I'm gonna delete these pages. And watch what happens if I delete a page with a primary text frame and its content. I'm gonna delete 19 through 21. I'm going to delete those. See how they automatically reappear again? This is because of an option called Smart Text Reflow. This is what I use a lot for long documents. To activate this, you are going to go up to Edit, Preferences, Type. Here is the section for Smart Text Reflow. If you have this checked, this will automatically add pages when overset text is found. Um, you can add them to the end of the section, end of the document, end of the story. I usually have end of the story selected so it can add new pages in immediately following the overset text rather than going all the way to the end of the document. Um, and I do indeed limit mine to just primary text frames. Um, I don't want InDesign automatically adding documents if I have an image caption that is overset. Click OK. And now let's do one more thing. 
Now let's say that our client changed his mind again and he wants to go back to that single layout column. So let's make a secondary parent. I am going to add a new parent page. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna call it single column. And let's add primary text frames and proper margins to this one. All right, now I'm going to add to that text box, just a regular text box. I'm gonna draw it inside of my margin. I'm going to indicate that I want it to be primary by clicking this icon. Then I'm going to add a, another one by drawing it here. Now we can see that we have a threaded pair of primary text frames that exist on this spread. Now here's what's awesome. Now, whenever we want to use a single column, all we gotta do is look on the side here. All I gotta do is select this single column layout and drag it on top. Now everything changes instantaneously. This is the best way by far, if you have complicated layouts with columns, to do it. Because now all you gotta do is drag and drop, switch it over, and everything reflows. It is so easy and will save you a lot of hassle and a lot of time. All right, everybody, well, I hope this helps. Um, if you have any comments for us, leave them in the section below. Go ahead and like and subscribe too, it really helps us out. And um, we just recently got monetized, so yay, thank you very much, everybody. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.